Hello, my friends, welcome back. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today, Skyloom has released version 1.2.0 of Luminar Neo, which is an update that includes the option for the HDR merge extension, which I'll be talking about in this video, and the inclusion of Dodge and Burn, which I covered in that video. Now, HDR merge, that comes for free if you own Neo and you own Aurora HDR 2019 or if you're a subscription customer of Luminar Neo, you get that extension for free. If you own Neo and own an earlier version of Aurora HDR, then that is an optional purchase. Again, there's a link down below if you wanna check that out. Now, what I wanna do in this video is talk about HDR Merge, give you a demo of how it works and walk through some workflow ideas and some tips. But first, I would like to tell you a little story. I'm going back to the year 2009. I was working for a small storage company called Drobo. You may know them. We got an email from a photographer, Trey Ratcliffe. You also may know him. He's the world's most popular HDR photographer. And back then in 2009, he was growing in popularity and that sort of thing. He sent us an email about wanting to learn a little bit about Drobo. Turns out he lived here in Austin. I live in Austin. They sent the email to me and said, hey, go meet this guy. Little did I know that meeting would literally change the course of my life. Of course, his email included a link to his website. And so I clicked that and I'm not exaggerating when I had one of those kind of jaw dropping moments. The first time I opened his website, I saw the photographs and I was kind of like, oh my God. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that at that moment, I decided I want to do that. Now, keep in mind, I wasn't a photographer. I had a basic DSLR camera that I did not use because I did not know how to use it. But I saw his photographs and I thought, that's what I want to do. So I had a meeting with Trey. And of course, the first question I asked him was, hey, what kind of camera do you have? I literally asked him that question. But anyway, I decided right then and there to start doing HDR photography and so, Here's a look, and I'm embarrassed to share this, but here's a look at a couple of my first HDR photographs. This was in 2009, a couple of sample HDRs. I mean, if you look at these, these are just crazy over the top. It's over the top details. It's over the top color, no control. Everything is saturated, what I like to call clown vomit. This is what gave HDR a bad name. Crunchy skies, lots of noise in the skies. I mean, on this photo here, I didn't even take a spot out of the sky. I honestly had no idea what I was doing other than just cranking up everything and making over the top photos, halos all around the edges. I had absolutely no control over anything. But I was determined to learn and I learned and I learned and I practiced and I practiced and I got better. Now the thing for me was at the time, I didn't feel like it was easy to do HDR. It was difficult, it was challenging. There was nothing really fluid to me about the process. The tutorials were lengthy. There were multiple apps involved. It was all just really confusing because I was kind of new. I had no background in photography. I definitely had no background in HDR. I just started getting out there, taking bracketed photos, blending them together in HDR software, and frankly, making a mess of it. But I was fortunate that my jobs over the years allowed me to travel quite a bit. And at some point, I started taking more and more bracketed photos, got better gear, and just frankly learned how to control the camera as well as learn how to control my images in post. So things got better. And today what I'm going to do is take these five exposures, which is from a bracket set I shot one fine sunrise morning in Las Vegas, and I'm going to blend them into an HDR showing you how the HDR merge works in Luminar Neo 1.2. The great thing is I think that you can make very natural HDR photos. It's easier. Things are tightly integrated because HDR merge is built into Luminar Neo. So it's all right there. You can easily and quickly make more beautiful photos. I get a very natural result, which is my base blended HDR exposure on the left-hand side. And of course, I take some creative license, which I'm gonna walk through in this video. And on the right-hand side, that's my final result. And for me, what I love about this tight integration is things are more fluid, things are simpler, things are easier. And of course, I get all the power and control of Luminar Neo to do exactly what I want to do to a photo. Because let's be honest, we all just wanna make more beautiful photos, however you define beautiful. So I'm gonna pop into Luminar Neo. I've got these five images here. I'm gonna drag them over to HDR Merge and let them go ahead and get created and merged into an HDR photo. You can see that the five images are here. I can arrow over to see the other two, but you can see it's a zero exposure at the brightest and a negative four at the darkest. 
I have a couple of options up here, including auto alignment and ghost reduction. There's not a lot of moving stuff in this one, so I'm not gonna mess with ghost reduction, but I do recommend clicking that gear icon if you need to. I'm gonna go ahead and click merge and build that HDR photo. Okay, and here's my blended exposure. As I said, I think very natural, very realistic results, which is part of the beauty of the engine running this tone mapping algorithm in Neo. It's taken from Aurora HDR, which for years has given me wonderful and I think beautiful and natural HDR results. So I think I have now a very beautiful blended exposure. It's taken advantage of that tone mapping and what I consider basically balancing the light. It's given me better visibility in some of the dark parts of the image and better control over the light and some of the brighter parts. And so what I like to do now is go in and take advantage of the powerful filters and tools here in Neo to get me a final result that I like. I make some minor adjustments here in the light section, taking me from that to that. Next to go into color, and I'm gonna do about a two on the temperature. It was a beautiful sunrise. I don't wanna overdo it, especially here. I like to save most of my color work for other tools. And I do wanna bump the tint. I go to 20 here. It's giving me a nice sunrise, kind of soft color look. I'm gonna go ahead and bump up the vibrance a little bit as well to low 20s. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna add a little bit of sharpening. So with just the develop tool, I've gone from that to that, which I like quite a bit, but I've got plenty more to do because again, I have all this control and all this power with these amazing tools here in Luminar Neo. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows contrast here in Super Contrast. Okay, and here's my current state after making those adjustments in Super Contrast. So if you look at the before and the after, it's giving me better control over these three different tonal areas, and that's what I mean. HDRs are so much easier now. You have these powerful tools that help you control the light better, and it's all in one place, which I love. So if you look at the before, any adjustments, there it is, just my base HDR, very well balanced exposure. And now you can see color starting to come through. I did a little bit of that in develop, but super contrast pops that as well. While I'm in my favorites, I'm gonna go into toning and in the highlights, I'm gonna go to about a 25, leaving the hue in red. So all I'm doing is taking the brighter parts of the photo and adding some warmth it's a sunrise. The brighter parts of the photo are mostly in the sky. I want to accentuate that. And while I'm on that topic, I'm going to go to landscape and I will go into golden hour, which I use on pretty much every sunrise and sunset. And I'm going to go to about a 30. There's the before and there's the after. It gives that nice little extra pop to those warmer tones. Now, one of the things I talked about when I showed you those horrific eye burning examples of my ugly, uh, horrible beginner HDRs was that I didn't have a lot of control over details. Everything was over the top and crunchy. And what I like to do, especially in the sky, by the way, and what I like to do, if you've been here before, of course, is smooth out things like sky and water. It's just something I like to do. And it's probably because of all those ugly examples of what I did in the past. Well, I can do that easily here because I've got things like mask AI and negative structure. So I just wiped negative stru structure across the entire photo. I'm letting mask AI calculate where the water is and where the sky is. And then I'm gonna go in and click those and allow it to apply that smoothing to those two areas. Okay, it's figured out where the sky is. I'm gonna go ahead and click that. Now my sky is highlighted and I'm gonna go ahead and click water and now my water is highlighted. So all I've done is basically use Mask AI to isolate the sky and the water with a couple of clicks and apply some negative structure to them simply because I wanna smooth them out. Again, probably because I did so much opposite of that in the early days of HDR. But I love that power and control, which you didn't really have, or if you did have it in the old days of HDR, you had to use multiple apps. I love having it all in one place. Something I like to do is add a little bit of Accent AI. I am creating a little bit of a punchy image here, not a ton, but I like adding a little bit of drama, right? I'm gonna go to 40 with Accent AI, which I like to use late in my editing process as I talked about in that video, but it gives it a nice little bit of intensity there. There it is before and there it is after. Further helps kind of balance out the light and create a nice little bit of color pop and contrast. But as I showed you in those early photos, color control was something I lacked. Again, multiple apps, it was difficult and uh, just challenging to do, 
partly because it was difficult and challenging to do and multiple apps and partly because I didn't really have the right apps or the right aptitude or skills to do it. But in this case, I do. I can control color incredibly well in Luminar Neo, I think better than I can do in any other app. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna reduce the overall saturation of about, uh, by about five. What I really wanna do is get into saturation and in individually control specific color channels. So I'm gonna start with green and I'm gonna go about a negative 15. Those trees are a little too much. And that's one of the challenges with my early HDRs every color was saturated and i think that just causes you to create that kind of clown vomit look and that's frankly what makes for an over-the-top photo if you notice here some of this greenish cyan is really intense i'm going to pull that saturation down a little bit more and while i'm at it i'm going to pull the blue back a little bit too so i'm getting better control but i want to to go into luminance and on the green, I'm gonna pull that down as well because the other challenge with HDRs is because you're balancing out the light and get the, getting this well-balanced exposure, everything's equally bright, which isn't necessarily real. And so I like to go back and control specific colors, not just the saturation, but also the luminance to help create a little bit more contrast and a little bit more dose of reality, let's say. If you look at those green trees, pretty green, pretty vibrant, fairly bright, now less saturated, less vibrant, and of course, less luminant. In other words, they're darker. And in fact, I think I'm gonna pull that down even further. So that's all I need to do to color, but the other thing I like to do in a lot of sunrise and sunset situations is a little bit of mystical, especially with an HDR. I like how it adds a little bit of contrast, creates a little bit brighter sky, a little bit darker shadow, which I think is more realistic. Again, HDR, balanced exposure, everything is evenly lit, which doesn't necessarily jive with reality. I like to add back a little bit of contrast to make sure I'm controlling that. So there it is before, and there it is now. And that is the full edit. Let me show you the balanced natural HDR I started with there. Evenly lit, I think nice balanced exposure. I of course took some creative license, mostly around color simply because I like it. But if that's a little too much color for you, easy enough to control with the color sliders and all the individual HSL channels here in Luminar Neo. If you found this video helpful, I think you'll really like that one as well. And that's it for my edit, my friends. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you're as excited about incorporating HDR Merge into your workflow. If you don't have it yet, get it at the link below. And I think for me, things have really come full circle where I started my photography journey, really, as an HDR photographer, trying to do that stuff. And as you saw, doing a pretty bad job, I'll admit, but things have come full circle. It's now all tightly integrated. I've got amazing control because it's all right here in Luminar Neo, and I love the results I can get. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll see you soon. I'll be back with more videos. Leave me a comment down below about what you want to see, and I'll see you soon, my friends. You guys take care. Until then, adios.